everyone i hope you're all doing okay sorry um it's been a while since my last vlog quite a few things have happened i'll talk about those in a minute um but uh, i thought i would film a vlog today that is just a bit of a general catch-up so i'm not going to talk about march or april makes when i'm in may or um plans i'm just going to throw it all into one as a bit of catch-up and hopefully um, kind of catch up with myself and my sewing and catch you guys up on what I've been doing and what I plan to do. Um, so the, I guess the reason that I've been so absent is firstly I was quite busy um, in April and, um, and sadly Rudy, my Yorkshire Terrier, who I know um, some of you will know from my videos, um, as he was in some of my earlier videos, uh, passed away about four weeks ago now and he um, he was very old he was 16 and a half um, and yeah he his health declined basically so I was kind of absent from sewing and from social media for a, a little bit from posting on my Instagram group and things due to that so um, anyway I'm doing okay um, I'm getting through things I'm starting to sew again um, I've done a, uh, I finished um, a make last week for my, uh, uh, Crafty So and So blog post, uh, which I'm going to write up this weekend, get some good photos and send across to Freya and Sarah. So I think that will be up um, very shortly, maybe it's next weekend or the week after, that that's due up as well. So that's exciting. And I've also been sewing some. Uh, baby clothes as well. I've got a friend who's expecting in the next couple of weeks so I had started some baby clothes for her um, a few weeks ago and then obviously with everything that went on I've not been able to finish them yet so I can give you a look. So uh, this is going to be uh, a catch-up as I've said. Um, oh yeah I was also away on holiday last week as well. Um, we went to Lanzarote for a week and I did some quick, some very quick sewing for that so maybe i'll just start with what i've been sewing and then i'll show you some of the fabrics that i've bought over the last couple of months um, and talk a little bit about maybe plans for them and those kind of things so i've got a pile of stuff out of shot on the floor so i'm gonna have to just keep leaning down um so just excuse that i'm also um a bit croaky today and i started with a runny nose so i've got a, a cup of echinacea tea with me i don't know what um where this has come from but i've just started to not i i feel fine i'm just grizzly my throat so um so the i guess i'll start with these so when um obviously with rudy passing we decided very quickly to go on holiday to, to have a week away um in the sunshine and just you know to kind of get out of the house and and have a bit of a break from it all so um I thought that I could sew a couple of bikinis up in a week. So I bought the um, Closet Case Pattern Sophia swimsuit pattern because I really like the high-waisted um, pants on that and I, I actually really like the whole design of the top. Unfortunately, um, and you will have probably seen this, uh, those of you who follow me on Instagram would have seen in my stories, I sewed the, um, the kind of proper bra top for it but the cups didn't fit properly. Um, I hadn't got the fitting quite right and I didn't have time to to keep remaking. So what I did is I made the pants from the Closet Case Sophia and I used the Sophie Hines Cartesian crop pattern, um, which is a, a bralette pattern. And I basically um, hacked it a little bit so that um, I could make it halter neck because it's normally um, uh, straps over and it's a clasp fasten at the back. Yeah, that's right. So I use swimwear um, clasps as well, uh, but I just modified it so that I could turn it into a halter neck and I, I streamlined the back a little bit so it just went down into one fastening rather than having straps that went over. And I used the um, halter neck strap from the Sophia swimsuit bikini top. So I kind of mixed and matched a little bit. So anyway, these, this is the results. I'll put um, 
photos even not of me wearing them I'm not modeling um, swimwear but so these are the pants which have the high-waisted panel and I lined them with um, swimsuit lining that I got from um, sort of fit to do a lot of lingerie, lingerie um, uh, sewing items and the swimsuit fabric was from So Me Sunshine and Harriet really kindly um, got this in the post to me very quickly because I didn't have a lot of time to sew um, and uh, then the swimsuit top so the it's got the proper clasps that I got from Fit to Sew as well um, and I used power mesh that I already had from bra making in the lining just to give me a bit of extra support um, and the straps so those work quite nicely this is a I used the striped fabric which is also from Sew Me Sunshine from Harriet um, for my first try because this was my favourite of the two although I really like them both um, and I lined the front panel with power mesh for the first attempt and I got the clear elastic from Fit to Sew, oh no I didn't, I got the clear elastic from Abercorn's. Um, I found the sewing really straightforward for the pants even though they're lined, <coughs> closet case patterns, the instructions are just brilliant, <coughs> excuse me. They're just really good as always. I will say I graded it out because I'm bigger at the hips than at the waist and I think I could have gone narrower at the waist still so maybe I could have sized down on both aspects especially because you're working with negative ease so um, the fabric stretches to, um, to your body. Oh excuse me so um, yeah the pants are both the same and then the first version of the top was higher up and I just, in the second version, I just added more, oh, where is it, um, more of a, a V to it just so that it had a little bit more shape um, but again I lined it with power mesh and you can also self line. Um, you don't have to use swimwear line and you can self line with the actual fabric because for this I had to use some extra panels because I didn't order enough of this and I just doubled up um, so yeah I survived the swimming pool in them they didn't fall off <laughs> and they didn't overstretch so overall I'm quite pleased I just think because my waist's quite a lot narrower sometimes I think I I overestimate what my measurements are so I could have maybe tightened the elastic a bit more or just narrowed down and I did for the second set but I think I still could have done a bit more or maybe it's a sway back adjustment again so it was at the back that I just felt it get ever so slightly but not enough to be worrisome in swimwear um, so and this is something that I really want to um, work on this year is my fitting actually and really making things that fit properly and developing the skills to be able to make these adjustments because I know that I need a sway back adjustment from making the ginger jeans and doing the online class um, uh, by closet case patterns and I think I'm starting to think that sometimes when I make tops I get this gape at the back and I think I might have to do a kind of a narrow back or narrow shoulder adjustment as well to accommodate for that so that when I make t-shirts and things I'm, the the back of the neck particularly isn't gaping so much and I've got a few books as well um, to start to think about this hang on they're literally on the shelf next to me I'll just grab these Okay, so one of the one of the books um, that I got earlier this year is How Patterns Work, uh, which is by Assemble. Um, and I was going to work my way through this to think about self drafting as well. And I think I might do a craftsy class. Um, is it still craftsy or blueprint or you know whatever an online class to learn about 
making um, your own template, I've forgotten the technical term, um, to work from for trousers in particular. Um, and then um, a while ago when Sean Kittenish Behaviour did her first um, live YouTube uh, hangout, I watched, um, I watched it and I asked her about fitting and she recommended um, this book as well or she recommended a link to a website that recommended this of someone who's good at fitting who recommends this book. Sorry that was really abstract, I can't remember the name of the, um, the person whose blog post mentions these. So this is a complete photo guide to perfect fitting. So again, it's something that I'm going to start to look at and think about this year. Because I tend to, I don't know about you guys, but I've got a tendency to do things like, I'll just size up just in case it doesn't fit. And then I won't go back and refit things. I'll think, oh, well, the loose fit's fine. I'll just keep it that way. When really I could be tailoring things a little bit more now. I've been sewing for a few years. I could be starting to adjust. Um, I've only just downsized my lark t-shirt pattern I was making, I think at uh, the Grain Line Lark, I was making the size bigger um, and cut a size smaller when I made the base slice for snowboarding a few years ago, Last, I think it was last year, um, and, re and that was still a loose-ish fit and I thought well I, I could make all my t-shirts a sm size smaller and they still wouldn't be too tight, so it's little things like that, you know, even though I look at my measurements I still, if I'm quite close to things, I'll size up, um, but sometimes there's already some ease in there. I need to pay more attention to finished garment measurements and so the, this is some summer reading when I finally get some, um, some time off. So yeah, I made, I've made the swimwear. Um, I'll show you, I'm just in the middle of making the um what do we call them uh poppy and jazz um patterns so it's the i think it's the strawberry sweatshirt yeah that's right and then the tangerine trousers i think they're called um, and I've made these before for um, a friend. I've done one iteration, but I'm making smaller ones this time. Now, I've got a friend who, um, she's having a girl, but she doesn't want um, pink and kind of gender specific colors. And I saw this fabric, um, which I hope you can see this, has got kind of little um, <laughs> egg and toast and milk and things on like breakfast items. So I'm making uh, the strawberry sweatshirt with that, but with a neckband that is in a contrast, but matching fabric. Um, and these are the tangerine trousers. So I'm doing vice versa and I'm making two sweatshirts and a pair of trousers, So, um, which are really cute. And you know, I saw these up on the overlocker, so they're fairly quick makes um, when life doesn't get in the way of things. So. So they're really cute. The fabric, I don't know if I've just said this, I think the fabric was from Lubadoo Fabrics. Um, and I also, I've just got, and I'm, I'm quite lazy when I make things like this as well. I use Wonder Clips rather than pinning because I just stretch between the clips anyway to make sure that it fits properly. So, um, I also bought um, another fabric from Lubadoo, which is this oh, so cute, absolutely gorgeous, and the quality of all these fabrics is really lovely as well. Um, it's that little uh, green clouds, and I've cut out two of the two stitches baby grow pattern, and I've made the two stitches baby grow for friends before as well. Um, so I've not got um, I've not started to sew those up yet. The other thing is that I'm thinking about presses or snaps or whatever um, you call them. I do worry a little bit with snaps about them being baby safe and like the protocol for that. I really like the the metal ones that um, that are different colours that don't have 
an ins so you see the fabric through the inside so they're just like rings not like um, full circles so I might pick up some of those but the snaps that I do have I got from eBay um, and just like generic they're not prim or anything and I just think oh are they gonna be babysit I mean they stay on things but you never know so um, and whether the plastics and things so if anyone's got any recommendations actually about that please leave it in the comments below I'd be really grateful I've not sewn this these up yet so I've got time and I also put one out in this fabric a set out in this fabric that um, that was from oh I'll start sewing um, from jelly fabrics that I made a t-shirt in as well I don't think I will have shared that on here but it is on my Instagram I've been wearing it a lot this week um, which brings me nicely to um, me made May because when today's the 5th of May it's a Sunday of the bank holiday weekend um, so we're now in Me Made May which was started by um, Zoe from So So Blog uh, this is her 10th year I think running it so um, well done for keeping the challenge um, going for so long and it's I feel like it's one of those challenges that people look forward to, that sewists look forward to coming round. I always make an effort, this will be my third Me Made May now, the first year I just started sewing, I didn't have a lot um, to wear but I kind of, I just want to participate um, and I think that's a great thing about this challenge as well is that it's not about having um, something that everyone has to do, it's about you setting yourself a kind of a personal challenge. Um, related to sewing so it could be you know anything and then um, I guess committing to that for the month of May it's not a photo challenge you don't have to um, uh, share photos every day I know a lot of people do and I'm trying to because I'm trying to get myself back into um, uh, contributing to the sewing community again it's sharing things on Instagram and back um, into the swing of things um, hence why I'm filming as well today but it's nice me 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 it's nice to do that so my pledge um, was to uh, I've, I've not over challenged myself so I'm going to try and wear one me made item at least every day which so far I've done today I'm only wearing one but as you know I make my own underwear so sometimes I'm wearing underwear which I will not be photographing and <laughs> posting on Instagram me wearing them um, and sometimes it's a full me made outfit you know today's a Sunday I'm in a sweatshirt which is you know I live in sweatshirts um, and a pair of ready to wear jeans my other pledge, speaking of ready to wear jeans, is that this month, um, in terms of sewing, I've challenged myself to make some more essentials. So I've had a pair of ginger jeans cut out for ages and I think I might have even have cut them out the last time I um, posted a video. So I'm definitely sewing those up this month so that then I will have two pairs of ginger jeans, two pairs of Mimi jeans because they're my favourites, they're the ones I wear all the time, my gingers and I've had mine for over a year now and they were my, I did a test pair um, out of a cheap denim that I could no longer wear anymore because they came apart a bit but it was for fit before I made the pair that I wear all the time but they're wet so, they're wet, they're worn so much um, that I need to rotate them with another pair. I've got the Morgan jeans pattern by Closet Case as well to make which I'm looking forward to and I've just ordered some denim from Sister Mintaka because um, she's, uh, she, Sandeep, has um, just turned one. It's her first birthday so um, uh, she did a coupon code for yesterday so happy birthday system in Tiger as well um so i ordered some denim to make the morgan jeans so non-stretch so again i'm I, I would like to make two pairs of jeans this month but i'm not sure but the thing is that uh, is to commit to making the things that i need in my wardrobe no sweatshirt sewing this month no 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 <laughs> no more sweatshirts i've got plenty of those and i love sewing sweatshirts um but no i'm not making any in may i'm going to commit to jeans some more underwear i've got some bamboo jersey um 
from ray stitch still to cut out and sew up as well in different colours. Um, so those are the things that I want to get through this month after I finish these baby clothes and got them in the post to my friend whose baby's due um, in the next couple of weeks. So yeah, those are my um, pledges really is at least one um, garment, me my garment every day but if I don't do it I'm not going to um, be upset or cross myself it's just a challenge and basically make my wardrobe essentials what do I need um, and I've also just ordered a trouser pattern as well from System Intaka um, by uh, Republic de Chiffon I think and I can't remember the name of the trousers um, I'll, I'll put below if I um, remember because I really need some more kind of um, these are like based on menswear as well so I'm hoping they'll be really nice and I need to troll them but these are the thing. this is where I've got the gaps in my wardrobe so um, fabrics I've even though I've not been sewing as much kind of in the last couple of months I've been buying fabrics as there have been offers on so obviously I bought specific things to sew like I bought the swimwear jersey and all the um, things that I needed for that and I've bought the um, fabric for the baby clothes as well speaking of which I also bought um, I also got this uh, double gauze which wait up it's, oh, it's non-directional so uh, so this double gauze which I bought with bees on um, for those of you who don't know I live in Manchester in the UK and um, the city symbol is a bee, it's a worker bee, it's a city that was built on the um, industrial revolution or that grew with the industrial revolution and the worker bee is a symbol and as my friend is um, uh, who's having the babies here I thought it might be nice to make some um, oh, what do they call them like spit cloths or um, you know the things that kind of go on your shoulder so I got that to make um, a few, of, a couple of those little muslin cloths for her as well to go with the mix and this was from, I think this was from Jelly Fabrics um, as well and they do it in different colours and it's, it's really lovely quality, it's really cute. Um, so uh, I got that as well for those. I'm not going to show you um, the bag that I've made for my crafty sew and so vlog as that will be coming up soon so I don't want to, um, uh, I'll wait to reveal that on the crafty sew and so um, vlog but I really enjoyed making it, it's a bag that was drafted by Freya um, for classes um, and uh, and they gave me some lovely fabrics as well so I might show that in my next video but I'll wait to, to photograph it properly and, and write the uh, blog post um, the other things that I have um, and I'm I'm a little bit uh, disappointed in myself because um, as you well, those of you who are on Instagram or who follow um, Tamlin who is sewn on the time on YouTube um, or uh, Voice of a Creative um, will have seen that they've been running the sewing patterns and prints challenge for this year and April's was Animal April and I was like oh yes animal print I, I saw a lot of animal print and I missed out on it because of everything that has happened I've kind of um I didn't have time but uh a while ago Lubadoo posted um a call out for people um to try out the uh scuba crepe Sorry, <laughs> I will, I'm, I'm clearly a little bit rusty, my mind's not fully um, functioning. So I had to try the scuba crepe and one of them was anim animal print so I asked if I could try it. Now I was thinking that I was going to make um, a jersey dress out of this or a hoodie or in my head I had a hoodie and then when it arrived um, it's it's drapier than normal jersey. I thought it would it would be really thick but it's not, it's lovely. Um, so 
I'm thinking now that I might make a kind of a jersey dress out of this instead um, but it's really nice it's washed and it's ready to cut and because it's quite um, a bold pattern I don't really want to um, make something too fussy with it because I want the pattern to speak for it so I might just make even a shift dress or something like that so I have this to make and then I also have another uh, one of these um, another leopard print fabric this was also from Lubadoo uh, which I ordered beforehand um, and uh, I just, I don't, I just, I mean, I like buying jersey anyway, and I just bought this because it's leopard print, it's shiny, I've seen a lot of people make things of it, and I felt maybe t-shirts or a long sleeve top, um, so this can add to my pile of leopard print fabrics, but I, I am hoping to work my way through this stuff. The other thing that I've kind of, that I wanted to do this month was to sew things from my stash as well. But I have ordered denim for the jeans because the things that I need to make, like jeans, I need kind of specialist fabrics like denim for. I also want to make a pair of another pair of the Roberts collection, Marilla Walker Roberts collection dungarees. Um, and I need to source something for that. I tend, if I buy fabrics, jerseys, I normally buy in a meter, a meter and a half. Um, and uh, kind of cottons I tend to buy in two meters because I make shirts a lot or shirt dresses which I can normally squeeze out of those so something like dungarees might take two and a half meters or I'm only five foot two ish um, so I can normally fit the trousers out of a shorter length so that is that 